Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Today we're going to have a look at how to fillet one of my favourite eating fish and also a great fish to target on bait and lures, and that is the flathead. Okay, so flathead, a great eating fish and also one of my favourite fish to target out there on baits and lures. Great thing about flathead is they're very accessible whether you're fishing you know, off the bank at the boat ramp right through to boat and kayak and all that sort of thing. So a great fish to target. When you do find them, you can find them in numbers. So I'll generally release more than I ever keep by a long shot. So you know they've, they've got a lot of meat on the fish so you don't need to keep a lot of them to feed the family and that sort of thing. Uh, in terms of filleting the fish, there's a lot of different ways to fillet a flathead. There's some very simple techniques you'll see around the place. What I'm going to show you is how I learned to fillet flathead when I was a kid. So it's a little more involved, but what it means is you end up with six nice pieces of meat with no bones, which was very important growing up with two younger sisters. I had to learn to fillet the fish so there was no bones, and you've also got very little wastage from the fish as well. So let's get into it, and I'll try and step you through it. We've got our GoPro here as well, which is going to catch us some nice close-ups for us, hopefully, so that you can really see how we work our way through this fish. All right, our toadfish folding fillet board. Excellent option to take anywhere with you. Make sure we're on there, yep, beautiful. And we've got our toadfish folding fillet knife, which is a, a sharp fillet knife, but this whole kit you can take with you nice and easy, whether you're in the boat or in your backpack, camper trailer, wherever you want to take it with you. So our flathead, we've got one, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is sort of an average eating size flathead. Uh, remember, with our flatty, you need to watch those spikes on each side of the head and also the spike up on his back there that just got me. So you'll see that spike on top, also the spikes on the side of his head. Because even though we've dispatched him and he's going to be filleted, they can still get you even through the filleting process. So be very careful there. I've got a bit of rag with me as well. This might be a little bit messier than our brim. Make sure you check out our filleting brim video as well tackletactics.com.au for loads of rigging guides and videos and all that sort of thing or Tackle Tactics TV on YouTube for loads of video as well. So with our flathead you'll see it's got one fin on the side and then another fin there on the side. So what some people will do is they'll come in behind that second fillet and they'll go from there and take the fillet off. That's fine, I just find that you lose a bit of meat up in front of that that fin so I like to go in behind the front fin when I'm filleting flatties and take all that meat out of there as well that would be left otherwise from that wing there so that's fine some guys you'll see will fill it from there or they'll fill it from there and they'll fill it right down to the tail fold it over and skin it from there with the knife I'm a bit old school I like to skin it by hand rather than with a knife so I'll show you that but you're welcome to skin the fillet with the knife the same as we did with the brim just holding that skin down and running your knife up along the skin. I just find it can be a bit tricky for people because that fillet is quite round so they often leave a lot of meat on the skin when they're filleting it when they're skinning it so whereas skinning by hand you won't leave that meat on the skin. So. When I start with a flatty like this, there's a few steps that I do before I even get to actually running the knife down the backbone and taking the fillet off. So the first thing I'll do is I'll come in behind the fin and I'm cutting on that angle following the bone of the fish up in toward the head. And I'll do that on each side of the fish. Now fish has been in the fridge so he's not cooperating, he's a little bit of a boomerang. So I just gotta try and get in behind that bit of gill there. So basically, I'm running down to the backbone from each side. So you can see there, I've cut in from this front fin, in from the front fin, into there. And that's, that's exposed the, the gut there. Then I'll basically go in from the butt and run the knife, that's very sharp knife, that toadfish knife, run that up and out the top there. And open the fish up. So you can see there we've opened up the gut cavity of the fish. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to lift out the gut out of the way and I'm going to, and now you can see there's basically the flesh of the fillet. So that's our gut cavity there. So what my dad taught me when I was young was unless you've got a really good knife, which I have, or you're, you've got a smaller fish, often these rib bones can be quite big. So when you're trying to go in from the top and run your knife down, you can often get stuck a little bit in around the ribs. So what he taught me as a kid was to open up the cavity there and I'm basically going to put my fingertips on the top of the knife here and we're going to break away those rib bones. 
So basically I've broken away the rib bones on that side and I'm going to break away the rib bones on this side. So basically I've broken away the rib bones before I've even started filleting the fish. So what that means now is I can now lay the fish on its side and those rib bones are already broken. So I'm going to run that knife down the backbone and I'm not getting stuck on those bigger bones. And there you can see I'm right through where the rib cavity would have been and I've hugged that fish all of the way, very, very square. Like I haven't lost meat along that backbone. Now I'm down to the smaller bones in the backbone and I'm basically going to continue to run that knife. We've got to break those couple of bones to the left and continue down the length of the fish. And we're basically just letting the knife sit on the backbone and we're rolling that fillet off the, the fish. So you can see there, we've cleanly taken that fillet off the bones. So we've taken that fillet off the side there and we haven't lost a lot of meat at all on that fish. Now to do the other side, we just come in again and we've already taken out those rib bones. So we don't have to worry about them. And that allows us to just stick nice and tight on the backbone, hug that backbone down. And you can see again, we're past where the ribs were and we've taken that meat right to the bone. And now we're gonna run down the length of the fish. We're basically taking our two fillets off the fish. And you can see there's a lot of meat on a flathead compared to the wastage, compared to say on a brim. So there's our flathead frame and we've taken the meat right up into the back of the head. So we're, we've taken the fillet right up inside the fish. So there is virtually just a head and, a, and bones and we haven't had, there's no wastage, no meat left in that fish. Although I'm sure some people will still find some meat in there and that's great if you want to cook those cheeks and that sort of thing. But that's basically our two fillets off our flathead frame. Now we'll have a call in the cleanup crew and just give it a little bit of a wipe because we don't have a kitchen sink here to use, which we would normally use. We'll give that a bit of a wipe off as well, get rid of those scales. And now we've got our two flathead fillets. And you can see there's a lot of meat here in those two fillets of flathead. That'll feed a couple of people, no problem. So to skin, here we go. This is where it gets a little bit interesting for some people. If you want, you can just take your knife and you can run your knife in like we spoke about. So you can hold there and run your knife up and take the skin off. What I like to do is here, I'm gonna use this as a handle for skinning my flathead. So basically I'm putting a nick down in here, a nick in under the flesh, and you'll find you'll be able to use that handle to just run your thumb around under the meat and separate the meat from the skin. First few times I learned to do this, it took a little bit of effort, and depending on the, the fish and how long it's been in the fridge and that sort of thing, it can be different levels of trickiness, but basically I'm just using my thumb to pull the flesh away from the skin. And we've only got to get to a point where we can get our hand around it, like there. And now you can see, we've basically separated that flesh from the skin. Now we can just roll the fillet down. So I'm just working my way along, grabbing the fillet and grabbing the skin and just pulling the skin off the flathead. Once you get down about halfway, you can sort of just peel it off and just rip it straight off. And that's our skin gone. So that you can see there, there is, again, we've taken all the meat we can off the fish and now we've taken all the meat off the skin. So we're not wasting any fish at all. And there's our nice big fillet of flatty. Even though it wasn't a giant fish, there's a fair bit of meat there. Now, here's the next trick that my dad showed me. We wanna run our finger up the backbone, of the, up the back along the fillet and you'll actually come across, boom, there's a bone there. That is our first bone in the fish. So that's why flathead tails are so expensive. There's no bones in this bit straight away, no work in that. So we come up to here and that there, if we go in behind that bone and cut that piece off, that is the bit that my sisters get. So there is no bones in that tail section there once we've run our finger up to that first bone there. And that is your first piece of fillet there. Now we've got this piece here and this has our rib section and that sort of thing in. So basically, there's a run of bones that run right down the middle of this fillet. So what we want to do is we want to split the fillet either side of those bones. So basically, I'm just going to use the knife, good knife, nice sharp knife. So I'm just going to run the knife and let it run down that line of bones. So I'm running the knife and it's basically, I can feel it just riding down those bones. And that's those, 
the bones right down the backbone of the fish. So I'm running down those bones and that's one side of it. Now the other side here I'm going to tuck in and I'm going to cut my way in along those bones there. So I'm basically going to lift these bones out the other side, in which case I just want to get started. Sit down, <laughs> filleting is a bit interesting, but we're getting there. And um, we'll just keep going. We're just going to work our knife over those bones. And again, we're just using the bones to guide the knife. Don't need to be aggressive. If, you, if your knife's sharp, you'll be fine. Just let the knife do the work. Let the knife run down those bones. And then you'll see what I've got here now is one thin line of bones. So that is the bones out of that fish. That's the, the back bones that separate those two pieces of meat. They can go in our crab pot. And we've got another section with no bones. So you'll find a white, whiter sort of belly cavity section. We've still got a little bit of work to do here. But this section here now has no bones. It can go over there, ready to eat. This guy here, I'd normally clean him up a little in the sink. Get a little bit of this blood and that sort of thing out of him. We don't want that. But there we go. This is the last piece on our first side of the fish. And basically what I'll do here is I will run my finger. So basically there's a couple of sneaky bones in here. So if you get this fillet and you roll it over your finger, you'll see those bones poke out. One, two, sometimes three. If you're rolling that way and they're away from you, you want to turn them around so they're facing you, pointing out towards you, these bones. You want them to point out so that you can find them easily and we can take them out. And basically I just use my knife and I'll go either side of the bone. Some people like to use little pliers to pull these out. My dad used to use his teeth, not ideal, but I'll just nick either side of that bone. That's what I broke him off, which I don't want to do. And I'll just, sometimes you lose a tiny little bit of meat when you pull these bones out, but sometimes they'll just come out clean like that. One bone, spinning back around, I'm going to go each side of this again. Each side of this bone, just to free it up so that I can get a hold of it. grab it and I'm just going to pull that bone out as well. Sometimes a little bit of meat will come out with it. Come on, out you come. There you go, there's another bone, bone number two. One more bone in here. I can feel him there. Now some people will say this method's pretty fiddly and you know what, it does take a little bit longer than doing it the other way. I just like this way because I get all the bones out and I don't lose any meat at all from this flatty that I basically kept to bring home to feed the family. So I'm not wasting any meat and we don't have any bones. So that's it. That's where we've taken our three bones out of the fillet. And you can see there, that's one side of the fish and we've got three beautiful pieces of meat and we've got no bones in there. So ready to eat. And that's one side of your flatty done. We've got our other fillet here. If you want to watch again, I'll skin him again and we'll, we'll go again one more time just so that you can follow the steps. So basically I'm going to just put a nick in here, separating the skin from the flesh, and I'm going to use my fin as a handle to hang on to. So these are all the things my dad said to me when he was teaching me how to fillet a flatty, and I've filleted a few over the years, that's for sure. So again, we're just using that fin. I've got the fin tucked in like this so that I can use it like a handle and that's allowing me to get a good grip so that I can just separate that meat from the skin. Once I get to a point there where it's separated right across I can just roll it down. So now I'm just moving my hand, oops, just moving my hand as I go and I'll get to a point where I can just grab that and pull that skin off and there we go there's our snake skin our lizard so that's our flatty skin off again there's our next fillet no sink to wash up in but we'll just keep rolling so basically here again I'm sliding my finger up there and you can feel your finger will hit that bone that's the first bone come in behind that cut it down on an angle if you want to to pinch a little bit more meat and there's your tail section again that beautiful nice tail of flatty Again, we're going to split this either side of the ribs. I like to just see which way it wants to sit. It'll generally sit sort of that way around, 
belly towards me and I'm just going to run down those bones again, let the knife run down the bones. We don't want those bones in our fish or we'll be in strife when we get home. It's amazing how many times I've been out eating fish with people, you know, go out, get some fish and chips and they end up with a flathead fillet that is full of bones, which always surprises me when you, you're in a, an efficient chip place that they leave the bones in there. So that's our belly slot again. That's the one with our other bits in. Now again, we're going to run in tight along here. So I'm using the board to hold the bones down and I'm using the knife to cut the flesh away from the bones. So I'm just sliding the knife along those bones. Those bones are pressed down against the board. Again, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on or anything like that. The fillet knife is sharp, so the fillet knife is doing the work. I've owned a lot of fillet knives over the years, but I'm, I love this one. It's brilliant. I'm super impressed with it, especially with the folding capability as well that I can just tuck it away, take it with me wherever I want, and carabiner on the back so I can clip it to my backpack or whatever I want to do with it, hang it on the boat or whatever. And that's our bones away. That's our backbone out. So there we go. Again, we've just got that section there where we've lifted the bones out from between the two fillets. That guy is bone free, so we're ready to go. You can see I've gone a little bit quicker this time because we've already done one fillet, so we're just zooming you through this one. And then we've got our last piece, our last piece here. Again, we've got to bend it. There's our bone. How many we got in this one? Sometimes you'll find two, sometimes you'll find three, which I think sometimes is I've taken one out with the ribs along the way. But um, you can, if you just bend it and work your way through it, you'll feel those there. So I think I've already lifted one out. So our second one is here. Each side of that bone. Grab the bone. And pull that out. Oh, come on, buddy. A little bit of meat on that one, but not too bad. That's our one big rib bone out. We've got one more in here as well. So we get our... There he is. Go around him again. Free him up so that we can get a grip on him. And then we're going to pull him out of the fillet as well. And there he is there, that other big rib bone. Only the two this time that I can feel. I'll check again. And there we go. That is our flatty. So as you can see there, there's a little bit of skin and now we've got our head now frame there not much not much wastage at all there and that is a great big pile of flattered fillets and that'll do sherry and i probably two bits each for dinner and then one bit each for lunch on a wrap or something like that so brilliant one of my favorite fish respect them make sure you don't abuse them let some go just keep what you need for a feed and uh, get out there and yeah, I hope, hope you get out and get stuck in a few and I hope that helps you to do a great job of filleting that flatty when you do get home. All the best with the fishing. Cheers.